saying the age factor is going to be... <laughs> You've heard it before. The age factor, because you're 42 years young, when, you know, looking good, looking good, but Jack's... Yeah, hungry, young, you know, he's, he's looking to take quite a big scalp, which which you'd be. I mean, how do you sort of feel about that? Uh, well, he's young, he's hungry. I've been there before myself. Uh, I think I got room experience, so his areas, if I take him to, he's never been before, he's going to panic. I've been there, and you know, anything he puts on me, I've been there before, so I know how to cope with it. So that's me. I've got the edge on him in a way of, uh, like I said, um, his experience side. Listen, this is the ultimate challenge. This is the best it's going to be. But the main event is coming up. Mark Weir versus Jack the Stone Mason. And a man who has fought both of these guys, my old mate, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, give him a round of applause. Anyway, Alex, big thing. You fought Mark Weir, you fought Jack Mason. Who do you see is going to win tonight? This is the whole reason why I'm here tonight. Fought both of them. You've got the old guard versus the new guard. It's, I can't call it. Um, I've lost twice to Mark Weir. I'd love to see him win for ego reasons, but I'm a big fan of Jack Mason. I actually think Jack Mason could take it with his new skills. Mate, whatever it is, it's going to be a war. And I hope you hand out the belt to these guys, because, mate, as you say, undefeated champion down here. It's a pleasure to have you down here. Mr. Reed, we'll see you later. But getting on with the next one. Mason, 27 years of age, front out of Team Sin Army. Ranked number one for at least eight years. Again, I was quickest knockout in the UFC. I was first champion in the WEC from England. I won my last 10 or 11 fights. No one deserves this shot more than I do. I think I deserve this belt. Jack Mason, you're here, you're coming to my territory. You're a young guy. You want my pedestal, you want my glory. It's an honor to fight him tonight. Um, it's a dream come true for me. I've been there forever, mate. I'm sure I'm your role model, so you're not quite your time yet. Some people think I'm the underdog. I'm about to prove them wrong. You watch this. I was, again, you're going to see me be a champion today. Mark, I'm taking that belt home with me tonight. People have asked me, is it Mark Weir? Is it Jack Mason? Trust me, both these guys are at the top of their game. They're peaking at the moment. One mistake from either guy is going to declare the other guy champion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your first fighter to the ring. Mark Weir! I have been friends with Mark a long time. We've uh, broke bread together, uh, spent some time when we were fighting uh, in a different promotion out in Costa Rica, and he is the real deal. Uh, the real deal as far as a fighter and as a person. Uh, again, like I said, I want Jack to win tonight. However, uh, I just hope things that work out, nobody gets hurt in a great entertaining, entertaining fight. And tell me, where does this guy bathe in the fountain of youth? I really need to find it because he's evergreen, isn't he? I mean, he looks like he could be 18 or 19 years old. And if you look at his fight style and his speed, same thing. He could be an 18 or 19 year old guy. He's just, he's still evolving. I mean, he doesn't like to say that he's, you know, found every answer. He's constantly looking for new things to change up his game. Um, and he's always going to be dangerous. Welcome your next fighter as he makes his way to the cage, Jack Mason! Jack the Stone. Introducing your first contestant, fighting out of the red corner. This man weighed in at 83 kilograms, and he has a mixed martial arts record of 19 wins, 17 losses, and one draw. Fighting out of free range fighters, Mark Weir! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, this man weighed in at 83.9 kilograms. He has a martial arts record of 12 wins, 5 losses. Fighting out of Tsunami Jim, Jack Mason! And your referee in charge of the action is Mark Woodard. This fight is all about range. What range this is fought at, I think, will be key to the victor of this. Well, neither fighter is bringing anything it's of a surprise to the table. Listen. Weir wants to keep it stand up, long range. Jack wants to cut down the distance and take it straight to the ground. So I've got to be honest, guys, looking at Mark Weir, you, you usually see signs of a smile or Let's a little watch. bit of relaxation. He looks very, very focused tonight. Well, he has to be because he's got a powerhouse in front of him. 
and a powerhouse that's evolved his, his upright game and Mark will know all about his ground game. This, to me, deserves to be top of the bill here tonight. What, what an incredible potential matchup this is. Now, the important thing for Jack is he can't let Mark dictate the fight, meaning set up his feints, throw the kicks. He's got to pressure and cut down that distance and take this down to the mat as soon as possible. Well, Pierre, being blunt, we saw what happened to, to Mark the Beast Epstein when he allowed that to happen, when he was drawn into the range that Mark Weir wanted to fight. Whoa, big opening from Mason with big flying hooks. And he with... went for the single leg, Rob, straight away. Now, he's got to be careful because Mark does no ground. Mark is keeping his legs based out. He's trying to grab the crotch here or the, the single leg just to prevent Jack from taking, finishing, or completing this shot. And let's be honest, Mark's legs are very, very agile and flexible. I mean, he's constantly, flip, you know, he's got very active hips because that's what allows him to get back up to the top. Jack's got to be careful that Mark doesn't loop over that leg and take his back. That's why I was just about to say, we're, we're almost trying to step over, but Mason does a good job, turns his shoulder in, tries to keep that leg flat to ground. But we're... Great work up on his arm, kicks his legs, ran. Mason still trying to work him for that takedown. Trying to keep hold of the single leg, but we seems to be doing a great job of getting those underhooks. And I'm telling you what, Weir probably worked this day in, day out. Up against the fence, out in the open, just take down the fence. And right now, it looks like it's paying off. Well, Pierre, picking up on the point you said earlier when you said there's no surprises here, this is because this is two very well-known men, and they are huge knees from Weir to the head of Jack Mason. As you said, these, these men, there's no surprise in the game. They know what's coming. But, Rob, those were two vicious knees from Mark Weir. That's right. Mason looked a little bit shocked from those. As you said, two heavy knees, one to the fire as well. Now, if you see, Mark has got... Jack's hand trapped and again he's using that to throw his punches because he's not able to defend but with one arm he'll throw the punches in and then he'll try to throw the knees in Jack has to advance his position stand straight up get that hand control back well, with right. the flexibility in those legs of Weir Jack has to worry about having that right arm trapped there Pierre because that right knee can come round from that flex there it goes a little sweep attempt as well from Mark Weir now Mark is Taking the back, he's, Jack's got to be careful. He's got to straighten. He's got to posture up, and he's got to defend against those knees. Weir has very, very long knees, and he's able to get them up very, very easily. That's right. Almost catches ahead of Mason again there. Again, Weir kicks the back of the legs, drops his opponent down. Now this is a little bit of surprise for us. Weir is actually initiating the takedowns. However, he's doing it with a position of domination in that he's taking it down with it, him being on top of Jack's back. Well, he's able to keep heel control. Let's be honest, he's got that arm still across the body of Mason. He's kicking away the backs of the legs of Jack Mason, and he's not giving Jack the opportunity to turn in. He's fighting a very, very smart fight here at the moment. Now, back elbow by Jack. That's a smart move. He lands again. However, Weir is still throwing the punches up and through the middle. And again, it lands solid. That's right. Weir was almost waiting for the back elbow to come up there so he could fire the right hand underneath. I mean, that's just a crafty and wily veteran. Looking at Jack's face, I'm not convinced he's fully recovered from the solidity of those first two knees. They really were strong. Now, Jack is trying to go for a Kamura. However, he's not able to make the connection because Weir has really dominated that hand control. And again, that's some place you don't want on Mark Weir is your back. And he's got to be careful with the tie clinch. Another punctuating knee for Mark Weir. I tell you what, I was holding my breath for a lot of that because that was a very dangerous position that Weir had Jack Mason in. As I said, I still think Jack's shaken from that. Well, he needs to try to ride out the, t the last couple of seconds of this round, clear his head, and get some instruction from the corner. But again, what, what he doesn't need, Pierre, is to be at this range. No, this is the range he does not need to be at. No, he needs to be cutting down the range off of punches or off of his punches, but he needs to change level, come in, but he's got, again, he's got to be aware of the... Oh! And Weir took a stumble off the back of that. I think he lost his balance as it landed, but he that's landed where he's spinning dangerous. hook kick, Rob, and that's the range that The Jack lucky thing for Jack that saved him on that was it landed with the bottom of the foot and not, not the, the heel. heel. That's where the smack came from, and that was the saving grace for Jack Mason on that spinning kick. Pierre, if that was the heel, this fight would have been over now. Yes, without a doubt. Jack has got to keep that guard up, and he can't let Weir dominate the distance. Well, you see Mason skip round there, circular. Doesn't want to get caught going backwards. And that long